It would have been hard to think of the Oaks without thinking of their all-star catcher, Billy Ramondi. He was the backbone of the team. Ramondi began his professional baseball career with the Oaks in 1932. Born in San Francisco and raised in Oakland, he was from a baseball family. His younger brother Ernie played infield for the Seals from 1938 to 1939 and rotated at third base for the Oaks in 1940 and 1941. Billy's other younger brother, Al, pitched mainly as a reliever to Billy for the Oaks in 1944 and 1945 after stints with the San Francisco Missions, the Hollywood Stars, and the Portland Beavers. Billy's youngest brother, Walt, played shortstop for the Oaks in 1943. Billy Ramondi led the Pacific Coast League in fielding in 1942 and was regarded by many as the best catcher in the league. The last few months of 1945, Bill managed the Oaks after Dolph Camilli left, but he preferred the role of a player to that of a manager. By the time Casey took over the manager's reins, Ramondi had already been catching for the Oaks for 14 years and was 33 years old. Born in Berkeley, California and raised in Oakland, Tom Hafey began his Pacific Coast League career as an outfielder for the San Francisco Missions from 1932 to 1935. He was the nephew of Hall of Famer Chick Hafey. After playing third base for the New York Giants in 1939 and a few games for the St. Louis Browns early in the 1944 season, Tom returned to the Coast League in mid-1944 to play for Oakland. He began pitching in addition to playing the infield and outfield for the Oaks in 1945. He would stay with the Oaks until he was traded to the Los Angeles Angels in the middle of the 1948 season. He was 34 years old by that time. Right-handed pitcher Damon Hayes was used primarily in the bullpen. Tall and lanky, at over six foot two, he was 30 years old by 1946. Born in nearby Santa Cruz, Les Scarcella attended high school in Richmond, California. After playing for the Cincinnati Reds from 1935 to 1939 and the Boston Braves in 1940, he signed with the Oaks in 1942 and had been their regular first baseman and outfielder ever since. In 1944, he won the Pacific Coast League batting crown and received the St. Louis Sporting News Most Valuable Player Award. In 1946, when Casey took over, Scarcella was 33 years old. Ralph Buxton began pitching for Oakland in 1939 after three seasons for the Los Angeles Angels. From Canada, he attended high school in Long Beach, California. Known for his screwball, Buxton had been a strong right-handed starter for the Oaks during the 1939 through 1943 seasons. When he returned from the war in 1946, he was 35 years old. Before the war, Vic Bucola had played first base for Spokane in the Western International League. A native of Los Angeles, he signed on as a first baseman for the Oaks when he returned from the service in 1946. Left-handed pitcher Charlie Gassaway was acquired from the Philadelphia Athletics. Nicknamed the Sheriff because one of his ancestors was the sheriff of his hometown of Gassaway, Tennessee, and the Fireman because of his winter occupation, Gassaway had been playing professional baseball since 1936, serving two years in the majors. He had hurled for the Chicago Cubs and the Milwaukee Brewers. And before joining the A's in 1945, he was with the Cleveland Indians for part of a season. From Milwaukee in the American Association, the Oaks acquired right-handed pitcher Floyd Spear, the Arkansas Hummingbird. Spear started his professional career in 1938 in the Cotton States League and had been with the Chicago White Sox, St. Paul, and Milwaukee before joining up with the Oaks in 1946. 
From the Philadelphia Phillies, the Oaks acquired fast and steady shortstop Ray Hamrick. He had had his best season in 1943, playing for his hometown of Nashville, where he hit for a 310 average. The Oaks' prize acquisition of the 1946 season was Brooks Holder. Holder had joined the Pacific Coast League near the end of the 1935 season as a second baseman for the San Francisco Seals. In 1936, he hit 289 as the Seals' regular second baseman. In 1937, Seals manager Lefty O'Doul moved Holder to the outfield in order to platoon him with Dom DiMaggio. After playing eight years with San Francisco, scoring 110 or more runs in five of those seasons, he was traded to the Hollywood Stars in 1943. Holder doubled the number of home runs he hit for the Stars, but his cumulative average over three seasons in Hollywood dropped to 272. In 1946, he purchased his release from Hollywood for $2,500 and signed with the Oaks for a $3,000 bonus. At the age of 31, he became the Oaks' regular left fielder. Dario Lodigiani had been a sure-handed infielder, playing at second base, third base, and shortstop for the Oaks in 1935, 1936, and 1937, before going to the majors, where he played three years for the Philadelphia A's and three years for the Chicago White Sox. A native of San Francisco, where he attended Galileo High School, Lodi was 31 years old by the time he returned to the Oaks in 1947, after serving in the Army Air Corps during the war. Mel Dezebu had been an outfielder for the Oaks in 1941 and 1942. A graduate of Fremont High School in Oakland and the University of California at Berkeley, Dezebu returned to the Oaks outfield in 1947 at the age of 28. Gene Willard began his Pacific Coast League baseball career as an infielder for the Los Angeles Angels in 1932. After playing infield for the Angels for four years and one year for the Seals, he began pitching for the Angels and later for the Solons. He pitched and played infield in the majors for the Cubs and the Cardinals in 1936, 1939, and 1940. After the war, he played a year for the Solons before coming to Oakland in 1947 as an infielder, outfielder, and pitcher. By 1948, he would shift to catching. By then, he would be 34 years old. Outfielder Eddie Murphy was acquired in 1947 from Bremerton in the International League, where he hit 311 with 15 homers and 51 stolen bases to his credit. Maurice Van Robois came to the Oaks in 1947 after several successful seasons in the outfield for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was 31 years old. Left-handed pitcher Alden Wilkie was also acquired from the Pirates in 1947 in an exchange that included the popular Oaks outfielder Wally Westlake. From Saskatchewan, Canada, Wilkie started his baseball career for Tacoma in 1937. He was 32 years old when he joined the Oaks. Tom Hafey's younger brother, Will Hafey, also joined the Oaks in 1947. Also born in Berkeley and raised in Oakland, the right-handed pitcher was also a powerful hitter, piling up a 340 batting average while outfielding for Idaho Falls the previous season. 23-year-old Will would bring strong pitching and batting to Casey's team of veterans. Another youngster to come to the Oaks in 1947 was a kid from the Berkeley Sandlots named Alfred Manuel Martin. Only 19 years old, Billy was a hot prospect from the Junior Oaks who had been recruited by the Oaks for their Idaho Falls farm team as soon as he graduated from high school in 1946. 
He moved up to their Phoenix Farm Club in 1947 and was playing for the Oaks by the end of the season. The veteran players on the team took a special liking to this impetuous young second baseman who would eventually make history in his own right. Finally, in 1947, the Oaks added left-handed first baseman Nick Etten to their roster. Etten started playing professional baseball in 1933. In 1944, when he was with the New York Yankees, he led the league in home runs, and in 1945, led in runs batted in. When he joined the Oaks, this 6-foot-2-inch, 198-pound athlete was 33 years old. Lloyd Christopher had first joined the Oaks in 1940. He played two years for the Seattle Rainiers from 1943 to 1944 and three years for the Los Angeles Angels from 1945 to 1947 before returning to Oakland in January of 1948 in a trade for infielder Mickey Burnett. From Richmond, California, Christopher would bring a strong bat to the Oaks lineup and become one of their regular outfielders for years to come. Merrill Combs was an all-conference shortstop at the University of Southern California before he started his professional baseball career in 1941 with Greensboro in the Piedmont League. In 1947, he played 17 games for the Boston Red Sox and was optionally assigned to the Oaks for the 1948 season. A left-handed batter and right-handed fielder, Combs became the Oaks' third baseman. After nine years in the major leagues, right-handed pitcher Bob Klinger was acquired from the Red Sox. He made his Pacific Coast League debut with the Sacramento Solons in 1937 and played the 1938 through 1943 seasons for the Pittsburgh Pirates. In 1939, he was their leading winner. From 1944 to 1946, he served in the Navy. When he returned to baseball after the war, Klinger signed with the Red Sox and led the American League with nine saves. He is credited with saving the pennant for the Red Sox in 1946 and was hailed as one of the best pitchers in the American League. When he started the 1948 season with the Oaks, he was 40 years old. Left-hander Lloyd Hiddle had been part of Johnny Babich's team that won the California League pennant in 1947 with a record of 20 wins against six losses for the Stockton Ports in 1947, Hiddle joined Casey's Oaks in 1948. Left-hander Earl Jones was acquired from Toledo in March. A graduate of Roosevelt High School in Fresno, California, he was 29 years old. In a successful trade with the Cleveland Indians that allowed Will Hafey to stay on with the Oaks on option during the 1948 season, the Oaks acquired right-hander Les Weber. He had been pitching in the majors for six years and led the National League with 10 saves when he was with the Dodgers in 1943. A native of Kelseyville, California, he was 33 years old. A native of Oakland, Jim Tobin had begun his baseball career with the Oaks Farm Club in the Arizona Texas League. From there, in 1933, he was signed by the Yankees, who sent him to Oakland in 1935, where he chalked up an impressive 11 and 8 record before injuring his knee in mid July. After missing the Yankees' spring training camp because of injuries in 1936, he returned to Oakland. At the end of the 1936 season, the Yankees wanted him back, but he signed with the Pirates instead. He spent nine years in the big leagues, in Pittsburgh, Boston, and Detroit between 1937 and 1945. He was with the Braves when Casey turned him into a relief pitcher. He then began throwing a knuckleball in 1944 and pitched two no-hitters plus a nine-inning shutout. When Tobin was with the Tigers in 1945, they won the American League pennant. He returned to the Pacific Coast League in 1946, pitching for the Seattle Rainiers and the San Francisco Seals. 
He was released in 1947 and went back to semi-pro ball. Casey was glad to get him back to Oakland in August of 1948. He was 35 years old. A native of Sonoma, California, Thornton Lee began his Major League Baseball career with the Cleveland Indians in 1933. Four years later, he was acquired by the White Sox and stayed with Chicago for the next 10 years, becoming one of Major League Baseball's top left-handers from 1937 to 1941. In 1941, he led the American League with 30 complete games and a 2.37 ERA and collected $2,500 for winning more than 20 games. In 1948, he was acquired by the New York Giants and would divide his time in the 1948 season between the National League and the Pacific Coast League, where he would contribute to Casey's pitching staff. He was 42 years old. In a mid-season trade with the Sacramento Solons, the Oaks acquired veteran pitchers Lou Toast and Jack Salveson, both 34 years old. From Cumberland, Washington, Southpaw Lou Toast played in the Pacific Coast League for the Sacramento Solons, the San Francisco Missions, the Hollywood Stars, and the Seattle Rainiers over the previous 12 years, and laid claim to an impressive overall earned run average of 3.76. Right-hander Jack Salveson first pitched for the Oaks in 1939 after he was acquired from the Los Angeles Angels for $1,000. Known for his control, Salveson stayed with the Oaks until 1943 when he was drafted to the majors by the Cleveland Indians. He returned to the Pacific Coast League playing for the Portland Beavers in 1946 and the Solons in 1947. Billy Ramondi later said, that he was one of the two best pitchers he ever caught in his 21 years in the league. In the same trade with the Cleveland Indians that had brought pitcher Les Weber to Oakland, the Oaks had also acquired outfielder George Catfish Metkovich. From Angels Camp, California, he was playing for the Detroit Tigers Farm Club in Henderson, Texas in 1940 when the baseball commissioner made him and 90 other Detroit players free agents. He then signed with the Boston Braves and was sent to their farm club in Evansville. In 1943, the Braves sold him to the Seals, where he became one of the most celebrated players in the Pacific Coast League. Under manager Lefty O'Doul, Metkovich moved from the Seals outfield to first base and raised his batting average to 325. He then went back to the majors to play for the Red Sox for the next three seasons. The Red Sox sold him to Cleveland in 1947. And in the same deal that brought pitchers Lou Toast and Jack Salvis into Oakland, the Oaks also acquired veteran catchers Eddie Fernandez and Ernie Lombardi from the Sacramento Solons. Eddie Fernandez was born in Oakland and began his Pacific Coast League career in 1937 as a utility player for the Seattle Rainiers and later for the Portland Beavers. He caught for the Los Angeles Angels for two years in 1943 and 1944. When he came to the Oaks from Sacramento, he was 30 years old. A native of Oakland, Ernie Lombardi first joined the Oakland Ball Club in 1926 and played with the Oaks in 1927 the last time the team won the Pacific Coast League pennant. After hitting more than 20 home runs in each of his last two seasons, he left Oakland in 1930 to join the Brooklyn Dodgers. Before leaving, though, he managed to hit a record-setting long ball over the old center field scoreboard at Oaks Park. From Brooklyn, he went to Cincinnati in 1932, where he batted over 300 in seven of his next 10 years, including a batting championship in 1938 when he hit 342. He went to the Boston Braves in 1942, where he won a second title with a 330 average. He next went to the New York Giants for five years. While playing for the Solons in the first part of the 1948 season, he blasted a hanging curveball thrown by Oaks pitcher Lloyd Hiddle that was still rising as it cleared the left field fence at Sacramento's Edmonds Field. It landed in the parking lot 
578 feet from home plate. Later in the season, after he came to the Oaks, he hit the longest home run in the history of the Emeryville Park. He was later inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Lombardi was 40 years old when he returned to Oakland in 1948. Casey could not have asked for a more powerful hitter to round out the Oaks roster. An all-around athlete, Bernard Frenchy Uhalt quarterbacked his Bakersfield High School football team to the state high school championship in 1928. He turned down college football scholarship offers to sign with the Oaks in 1928. After 61 games at Bakersfield in the California State League the following season, he was called back to Oakland, where he played the next six seasons. In 1936, he went to Milwaukee, but returned to the Coast League in 1938 and played for the Hollywood Stars from 1938 to 1942. He led the league in stolen bases in 1938, and when Gilmore Field opened in 1939, he won a pair of shoes, a hat, and two shirts for getting the first hit, the first double, the first steal, and the first run. From 1943 to 1947, he played for the Seals, hitting over 300 twice in his five years there. After he broke his ankle, sliding into home with the winning run against the Oaks in 1947, the Seals let him go the day before the 1948 season began, and he signed with the Oaks. He was 38 years old. Walt Posake was a rookie outfielder from Richmond, California. After performing well for the Oaks in spring training, he was farmed out in order to acquire more experience, but would play in 16 games and come to bat 49 times for the Acorns in the 1948 season. To his 1948 roster, Casey also added speedy Eddie Samkoff from the Stockton team. Samkoff batted 315 for the Ports and stole 22 bases in 1947. A lifelong resident of Sacramento, the right-handed Samkoff would play second base for the Oaks. Finally, Casey was able to add Harry Lavagetto to the Oaks 1948 team roster. Lavagetto had first signed with the Oaks in 1933, shortly after he graduated from Oakland Technical High School. He acquired the nickname Cookie from his Oakland teammates because he was a favorite of Oaks president Victor Cookie Di Vincenzi. He moved to the big leagues in 1934, playing for Pittsburgh and Brooklyn and making the National League All-Star team four times in 1938, 1939, 1940, and 1941. After serving four years in the Navy during the war, he returned to the Dodgers in 1946. In 1947, he played for the Dodgers in the World Series against the Yankees. In Game 4, he came to the plate as a pinch hitter in the bottom of the ninth, with the Dodgers trailing 2-1. to one. With two men on, Cookie drove an outside pitch off the right field wall for a double that broke up a no-hitter and won the game for Brooklyn. When he returned to play third base for the Oaks in 1948, he was 36 years old. And now representing the city of Oakland, Mayor John Redding. Casey, as mayor of the city of Oakland, it gives me a great pleasure today to present to you the key to the city of Oakland. Mounted on this plaque as well is a proclamation which proclaims that today is Casey Stengel Day, and in addition, there's a engraved likeness of you with your 1948 victory smile. We're honored to have you with us today. Thank you very much, Mayor. Appreciate it very much, and uh, I uh, will use this key for our new vault in one of our banks. Thank you. 